Hey guys, I'm Thomas Cali Jarlier. We are here at Marine London in Shoreditch uh, doing the interview for Killer Inc. the Yellow Inc. special. I wanted to be a tattoo artist. Uh, to be honest, the truth is that I didn't actually do anything to become a tattoo artist, it just came on its own. I was actually doing studies to become a musician in London and uh, at the same time I started to draw and uh, bit by bit I fell into tattooing and when I finished my study of music I just opened my small shop and but I didn't have like big expectation of tattooing so it just I don't know it just happened really. My tattoo style is realism but as well abstract realism I would say maybe avant-garde sometimes I kind of like to do just pure black and grey, but if I have freedom and I actually can do what I want, I like to explore a little bit the realism in its bigger picture. Mixing it with different styles and pure graphic things and don't have any meanings. Yeah, I would say realism with everything that can be built around it. I've been tattooing now for 11 years. 11 years non-stop like from the moment that I opened my small shop in London, even a little bit before. I was doing like some on and off when I was finishing my studies here in London. But yeah, it's been 11 years and uh, we travel now between France and, and London. My biggest influence was Matteo Pasqualin. Uh, it's someone that I actually met in London convention before I started tattooing. And uh, he kind of like motivated me by his work, but as well became my best friend in the tattoo industry. So now, it, motivating each other to keep going and keep uh, doing what we do. And this is what I really admire about him. When you speak with him, you can still feel the passion that he has for his, his craft. And uh, I think it's inspiring. So. I already had a collaboration with Matteo Pascoli, but uh, if I could choose someone else, I think it would be probably Victor Chill from Spain, uh, because he is really open-minded to, uh, to different styles. He does realism, color realism, but as well like new school. Uh, so I think it could be really interesting to work with him. I don't particularly have a favorite theme to tattoo. I just like to have freedom on what I can propose to people. I like that people give me ideas, but I like then to offer what I can from that idea. To turn the question around, I don't like when people tell me exactly what I need to do, if it makes sense. I did at some point, but after, after 10 years now, uh, I kind of want to a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, free. About color, what's really interesting about me is that I'm colorblind. So if you see the colors that I use, it's always really flashy because I can understand exactly what they are. I don't really do color realism because then I don't see anything. So I usually just use like red. For, like all the colors are always from World Famous. Uh, it's a brand that I've been working with since I don't know, like eight years, I think. And uh, yeah, it's always the same colors, like red, blue, pink, like really simple, simple colors. I think, I think when you understand the, the technical aspect of tattooing, you don't really have any barrier or limit. So I think the key to actually make a good realistic tattoos is to forget your tattooing. Just treat it like if you are just drawing or painting and moreover, take your time. It's all about taking time, like uh, if you do a realistic portrait on a piece of paper, it's going to take you uh, 30 hours for something which is like big like that. And us, we have to do it in 8 hours, so already it's quite fast. The, the thing number one that I would say about making realism, to be able to make realism, is to take the time. Because it takes time, like, like if you would be painting it. So today we are tattooing uh, some kind of vampire portrait with like candles, uh, holding candles with a like, candle draping on the ends. It's Halloween-y, but at the same time can stay off in my style. The monsters that I like the most in terms of tattoo subjects would be probably vampires. Something that always works and you can even like go into tattooing portrait of Dracula, for example, which is pretty interesting. With World Famous, I think it's just like during a convention, just spoke that I can maybe organize a set. It was, it was already some... I actually came up with one uh, one of the mix, which is a grey wash, and the rest it was ink that I was using from the palette. So at the end we made the palette because it's a certain way of working. A little bit of grey wash and grey colors. So this is how the marine set uh, came to life. 
And with Sunskin, it was a bit more, it was the same during the convention, we just started to speak. And uh, we started a collaboration, uh, I think, five years ago, where I made my first machine, then we made a second machine, which was uh, the evolution of that first machine that was I, I used for a long time, and I was thinking maybe I can have another machine to, uh, to, to do certain things that uh, maybe the other machine could not do, it makes sense. With Sunskin, it's really close collaboration. We keep speaking about things, and at some point, something just appears. Well, I always have my sunskin stylo on the table, but I always like to try what's coming out on, com coming out on the market in terms of machine. I think it's important to, to keep track a little bit. If there is something new coming out, which is very good, it's actually good to try it and, and use it. There is no reason. Uh, but for me, for now, I still didn't find a better machine than my own. So. To explain a little bit my both signature machines that I have with sunskin, um, I have one which is long stroke 4.2 and one which is 3.4. Uh, the 4.2 would be to actually work on all the, the difficult parts of the body where the skin is quite thicker and more difficult to put the ink inside so you need more heat uh, in the skin. So for saturation, for blacks, mainly a lot for black saturation uh, and textures. And the 3.4 would be for all the shadows and all the, the parts that you want really really smooth and where the skin is actually a little bit thinner so you don't have too much heat to avoid uh, damaging the skin. So yeah, my, my, my approach to seminars now, uh, I had different approaches. My first approach was to, of course, explain my technique. So because I have a certain way to work, I like to mix black, uh, gray wash and gray color. For the people that keep following, because the people keep coming back to my seminars, whether it's in real life or it's online, I want to keep offering something. I want to be able to help artists to actually become better. At the same time as well, I become better because I actually put on paper things that I have in my head. So it actually officialize a little bit what's inside my head. And uh, now I get to the point where I, now that people that follow me understand my way of working, I can actually jump into the academical approach of uh, art, the academic approach. If you paint a portrait, normally you need to understand what you're doing. Like you go to art school for that, to understand exactly how the light and shadows work, or actually anatomy of, of the human body to understand exactly what's going on. And this is what I want to offer now to artists, for them to actually go from being tattooists to tattoo artists, if it makes sense. Tattooing Neil Patrick Harris was actually pretty, pretty stressful. I don't do very good with tattooing famous people, to be honest. I, uh, I said no to a lot of famous people because of their ideas and the fact that they want something that have nothing to do with your style, but because in general, the fame, they think you they can do what they want, you know? But with him, it was different. He was very nice. He was uh, really open-minded. Uh, he did want a small tattoo, which I never do. Tattoo was really small. But I did my best for him because, it, I don't know, it's, to be honest, he's kind of the first uh, famous person that I meet that was human. So I enjoyed it. The whole experience was very nice. Kermoferon is my, the city where I am from. Uh, I come from the, the countryside one hour away from that city, but that's the biggest city of the region. And it's really the typical France, you know, like you imagine people going to get their bread in the morning and eat their croissant on the terrace. Well, that's, that's pretty much a place surrounded by, by nature. It's just really relaxing. And uh, London for me is just my second home. That, uh, that's, there is only two places I feel at home, London and, and, Clermont, and Clermont-Ferrand. So it's just, for me, a place that I enjoy to be, and it made sense for me to do a shop here. In France, we don't really celebrate Halloween, to be honest. It's more like maybe it's a reason for uh, 
older people to go out and, and party. But there is a few kids uh, that go uh, trick or treat, but it's, it's not a lot. In London, I think it's much more uh, celebrated. I do like horror films, uh, like more because of the, not because it's scary, but more of the whole uh, spirit of it. Makes you feel like in, in some kind of like dark uh, environment, which I enjoy. It's probably not really special, but I enjoy, of course, all the Tim Burton movie. Just because this is my, I don't know, I think it's really artistic and I don't know, there is something more, it's not really scary, but it's like maybe it goes with trick or treat as well. It's a bit more that spirit, I think, which is uh, quite actually enjoyable. I think the scarier will be definitely the monster you don't see, because they can probably do things that you don't understand. Thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.